one. Today I'm going to be doing something just a little bit different. You're going to be following along with me as I do an overview of C8 errors in general, as well as uh, go over the various OTG devices with which you can utilize for USB host. I have 25 games in my main user interface right now, and this is the magic number, the safe number, to guarantee that you typically would not run into any C8 errors on boot up or shut down, as well as be guaranteed your four save states per game for 100 save states. I mean, 25 is a nice magic and safe number to use, but I'm going to push it past the limits today. I'm going to take it up to 100 or so. I'm going to power down the system right now. And back in the day when I used to first play around with the NES Classic, I found out very quickly that if you go to about 100 games on the main user interface, you'd trigger a C8 error when you boot up the system. You couldn't even power on the system until you reset the games and remove some of the games. But I'm going to go onto the PC right now. I'm going to go into my USB host flash drive. Yes, I'm using a flash drive right now. I'm going to go to where my games are stored. And I have 25 games in this directory right now. But I'm going to go to my backup folder on the same drive. And I'm going to move all the rest of these games into that directory. I'm going to cut and paste them right now. We're going to push it closer to 100. We're going to be guaranteed a theater when I shut down now. It's guaranteed. 93 or so games. I mean, over 90. So I'm going to power up the system again. Another thing to mention is the more games you have, the longer it's going to take to boot your system as well as navigate the menus. So I'm booting up again. It's going to take a little bit longer than the last time I booted up with only 25 games. And this comes into account when you're using the various OTG devices as well, which I'm going to show you. But we're booting up. It's going to take just a few more seconds. And I am running via... The slow Octopus OTG device right now, along with a USB flash drive. And I'm going to go over this when I'm back on the PC in a couple of minutes. But I have over 90 games, and when I shut the system off, I'm going to get a theater. So everything's fine and dandy. I have 90 plus games right now. I'm going to shut the system down. And welcome to C8. My nightmare. Here we go. If you ever get a theater on shutdown, all you have to do is just power the system back on. Then back off, and you're good to go. Now I'm booting up to the PC again. And we're going to be doing something a little bit magical today. We're going to be installing a new HMOD. I'm going to go into Hashi so you can see what it is. Because I'm putting a course set update out today as well. Install extra modules. I have all my normal cores right down the line in uh, KMF Thematic Experimental Core Set. I'm going down to uh, USB host. I put one here, Mad Monkey C8 Error Deterrent. What this essentially does is uh, it effectively reduces chances of C8 errors on shutdown and in general. But I'm going to install this HMOD. I'm going to do it the transfer method right now since I'm on USB host. I'm going to go into my uh, Core Set release. And this will be out today of course. It's called No C8 HMOD. And I'm going to go to the flash drive. You can install it via Hashi if you have your system connected. You know the standard way, but I'm doing it the other way right now. I'm just going to go into Hashi, create a transfer folder, copy and paste it in there. That is one of two ways that you can install the HMODs. You could just do a Hashi transfer folder on USB. The only way you can do it is uh, simply connect your system and install it this way. Module, install extra modules. Those are the two different ways you could do it. But I'm going to uh, boot up the system now. We're going to install this HMOD. And we're going to get a double splash screen right now. And again, it's going to take a few seconds because I'm running over 90 games. And that is because I'm on a slower OTG device along with a slower flash drive. And I'm going to get into that as well as uh, far as the optimal setup to use for USB host. They have the fast blazing speeds and such. There's my double splash screen to signify that that no C8 HMOD installed. 
So once I'm on the main user interface with still my 90 games, I'm going to shut the system down and guess what? I'm going to have far less chance of getting a C8 error. I still have my 90 games here, but I have the no C8 HMOD installed, courtesy of Mad Monkey. I'm going to power off, and I'm not going to get a C8 error now. Still, I wouldn't recommend really pushing it. I would still stick to your 30 games, but you're going to be able to go over that limit with this HMOD and be fine 9 out of 10 times. I'm going to put back up to the PC real quick and go over one more thing. There are three different OTG devices that you can use. There's the slowest of the bunch, and uh, let me open this here. This is the one that I'm using right now. I call it the Octopus OTG. And yes, it looks like an octopus. You have uh, typically an OTG and charts, which you'd always want to have it in the OTG position. You have the thing, uh, the power connector, and then you have the little connectors for the USB devices. This is the slowest possible setup you could have. And you can connect the flash drive and two other devices, such as a mouse or keyboard to it. And I have this flash drive right here connected to it right now. So I have a slow OTG in that right now. And then uh, the second best one that you could use, should I say uh, the next best in line, would be this one here, which is a left angle. you got to make sure it is a left angle, otherwise you're going to be blocking the power port on the system. You only have space for one single uh, flash drive or such. And the third device, which is by far the best one, and it's the fastest, right here, it's an Inatech OTG device. It, this thing is spectacular. It runs around... 10 US dollars, but it's in the tech. That is the one that I highly recommend getting. And you can connect three different devices to it. And uh, one's the flash drive, of course. But the next best thing in line would be a passport hard drive. I mean, the passports are nice because they're self powered. You don't have to worry about any external power source. But I am running a passport solid state drive with no moving parts along with the Inatech right now, so I have that fastest setup of all. And of course the flash drives that you have in general could also have a various uh, format. And uh, if I plug into the, the computer right now real fast, there are three formats that you could use for uh, USB hosts. And I'm gonna look at my drive right here. We have NTFS, which is uh, the second best one you could use. You could use FAT32 as well, but it is a little bit slower and not as reliable. But the one that is actually better than uh, even that is NT is uh, EXT4. I'm going to plug in my EXT4 drive right now. This is my EXT4 solid state drive. And I'm using this program on Windows, Paragon. And I have it mounted right now. And I'm going to property that. I have it in EXT4. That is the single best format that you could have the flash drive or hard drive in, EXT4. And I'm going to be doing more tutorials on that in general. But for the most part, you're fine with NTFS because that runs just fine in Windows. But EXT4 is best. So right now my setup is exactly this. I have EXT4 on a solid state hard drive with the fastest OTG device. And I'm going to boot that up right now. And we're going to do it from the get-go and see how quickly I can boot it up. But I have to safely remove it with Paragon first. It is always good to safely remove the drive. I'm just going to eject it right now. And it's going to unmount it. I'm not going to power the system on yet. I'm going to actually switch over so you can see how, how it boots up. But I'm running around 100 games in the main user interface, and I am on the fastest OTG device, along with the solid state drive in EXT4 format. So let's boot up here and watch how fast it boots up. It's going to certainly boot up a lot faster than my uh, Octopus uh, OTG device, along with the... <laughs> the flash drive, which is a very, very slow device. Look at that, it booted up in around two seconds. Okay. So I still have my 90 plus games in this directory here. And I'm gonna go to RetroArchive from the main user interface here. 
And I'm going to load a Dreamcast game and see how quickly I can load a Dreamcast game. And there's another thing that I did to further increase the load times. That you're going to see it in a moment here. But I'm going to load Core. I'm going to load the Sega Dreamcast Core. Typically, when we load a game, we get a wrench arc load in or a loading screen. Guess what? I completely removed them all. And we actually have one to three seconds faster load times per game because of that. So right now I'm going to load content, start directory, dummy, Dreamcast, and of course you can run these from the main user interface as well. With your bent forward slash recast, or, you know, such. We'll load uh, Capcom vs. SNK2 as our test game here. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, 1,000, 7, 1,000, 8, 1,000, 8 seconds. It typically would take me 30 to 45 seconds to load these things on my flash drive. Some of these games load even around 5 seconds. They're pretty fast. And even going from uh, this clock menu to the next uh, end game takes another like 30-40 seconds. It was taking me around 3 minutes on my slowest setup of all. And the other thing I'd like to mention is that I would highly recommend installing your HMODs via NAND instead of external RetroArch. You're always going to get a faster install and load speed and stuff when you run them from NAND. There are various reasons to run external RetroArch, such as the custom OSTs. But if you're not running custom OSTs, I would highly recommend sticking to NAND internal flash memory. But we're trying this game out real quick. And I'm going to go on RetroArch video settings because remember, video integer is uh, on by default. I'm going to disable it because I'm not running the border. If I run borders, I would leave integer on, but if I'm not running borders, I'd turn it off. But I'm going to be releasing the core set shortly. And yes, games are running 33% uh, plus faster than in the previous release, which is phenomenal. And I'm going to be going over one other specific detail regarding Dreamcast as well. We'll try this out for a quick moment. This battle is about to explode. Way faster than before, which is awful. Now I'm going to load another game right now. Sometimes if you attempt to load a game, you might run into a C7 error on load. Don't give up on the game though, try loading it one or two more times. Because sometimes the C7 errors are just random and uh, the game doesn't load. Think of a, a lighter that just doesn't uh, flare when you try lighting it. So load content, start directory. Tell me, I'm going to load a shmup right now. Uh, homebrew shmup. Call drill. And if I get a C7 error, I'll just try reloading the game. But for the most part, I can get into the games without any problem. And I'm getting in them nice and fast on this uh, EXT4 here. Again, I have like 100 games in my main user interface, and I booted in two solid seconds. But you might notice that there, like I said, there's no RetroArch load screens anymore. I completely removed them all, and as a result, you're going to be able to load any game between 1 and 3 seconds faster. So we're trying out this homebrew shmup, which is a pretty cool game if you're into shmups. And many of you might have seen my uh, shmup strap against the series, but right now I'm doing the... Uh, Horror Strive Against the series, of which I'm going to do many more. Okay, we should be in-game here in a moment. Very, very cool. Full speed ahead. I can live with this. Bullet House Shmup. And I have a little bit of lag, so I paused the game like I showed you in a previous test video. Then I'm going to resume it. And that frees up memory so that I don't get a C7 error and have the game crash on me. 
And I would also recommend having the RAM uh, Nintendo 64 uh, crash inhibitor installed because that helps out a bit on games such as Dreamcast and PSP which use more RAM because of the RAM compression with a swap file it works out better this way. And one thing to note that is incredible about ZRAM is that you can install it and use it whether or not you're on NAND or USB host. It works on both because it works with the kernel directly. Okay, we're going to 